Hello, welcome to Thoughtbuster Living. Thoughtbuster Living kind of just takes everything that I do in my life, whether it's busting up a physical sod outside with homesteading, busting up um, with the kids, and just, no, that's not a good way to put it. Um, but we're sod busters, and sod busters just do the homesteading life and all that it entails. For me, it is home making, home schooling, home studying, and everything centered around the home. Sodbusters was born when my husband said it just fit our family. We work really hard and it just grew from there. If you're new, I hope you will click the subscribe button and check out the playlist that I have made so that you can kind of get an understanding of where we are today and where we started from at the beginning. So. If you haven't seen any of my videos, especially the first one, um, go ahead and check the playlist down below. Okay, so it is September and I really have not done a kind of monthly check-in update in a while. It's just been crazy summertime. I just took it off in more ways than one and financially was definitely one of those ways. <sighs> However, it's time to get back on and such is life. Back in 2012, I really began a more deliberate financial journey and we went from just barely making ends meet paycheck by paycheck to me having a specific goal and that goal was to pay off the house. I kept trying to make things work. The income really wasn't growing and my thought was, you know what, if I'm going to be working hard to have an income anyways, I want to think about this long term and for me that was pay off the mortgage, then we have that mortgage payment just in our bank every month and if there's months that I can't work hard then that's fine the mortgage is paid off and that money is still and that money remains in our bank account that was the goal back when I had my third child and now five kids later that kind of has gone back to being my goal it seems very common and ordinary for everybody to have a mortgage like if you don't have a mortgage you must be rolling in the dough no, I think it's that deliberate effort that we're making to kind of reduce all of the unnecessary payments in our lives. Things like electricity is kind of like food. If you use it, you're going to have to pay for it somehow. Living in our home, it's once it's our home, that is something we, uh, we have ownership over. You know, I'm not going to buy a Kindle, something that I own, and really want to have the payment plan, right? I just want to pay for it outright and all of that. Now there's a big difference between the budget process of a Kindle versus a home, but the idea is still the same. So in my mind, I'm working really hard right now. I would just like to work hard in, in a way that makes it easier for my life later on. You know, it, it's kind of the same with your 401k or, or all of these investments that you make in for an ease of life later on. This is kind of where I am. The, this, t today's question actually comes from somebody close to me who likes me to do the budget and finances with them. She had two questions. She said, I don't have a consistent uh, um, amount coming in. I, it, you know, it varies time to time. So what would you do if you did not have a consistent amount and you did not have um, a consistent paycheck? So maybe you get it at the end of the week one time or, you know, maybe it's every two weeks. You know, how do you budget? Things like that. That's actually why my husband and I, when we figured out, okay, it's time to take charge of our finances. It's time to just take control of all this. It's why we did that system of living off of nothing for a month. Um, but you can do it in many ways. What my husband and I did was we took our savings and we lived off of savings for a month. Doesn't mean we went crazy, but we lived off of savings for a month, making sure every single bill was paid and making sure that we had food. That was it. Bare minimum. 
using our savings. And the savings, by the way, was our tax return. We had t three kids at this point. We're pregnant with our third. Something like that. Okay, that's what we did. And then what my husband did for that month, let's say this is what we're going to do starting May 1st. We're just going to live off of savings until June 1st. Every time my husband got a paycheck, got paid, got whatever, he actually cashed that. You can do this however you want, but for my husband, he cashed it. It went into the safe. We left it alone, and every single time he got paid, every single time, whatever, it went into the safe for the whole month of May. We collected all of the paychecks from May whenever we got it. Once we collected everything that ended May 31st, okay? end of the workday May 31st anything that was going to be paid for from May we would then budget for June's bills out of May's money so if we had you know bills starting to come in on June well we calculate well based on May you know electricity was about $89 and it's probably going to be about 95 because June's a little bit harder than May you know whatever um, water. Water's been pretty consistent, okay? The last six months has been pretty consistent. June's just gonna be a little hotter. Let's add a little bit more of a cushion in there. And we would have put everything into its envelope prepared for June. So June has money all in there from May. Now we're starting to live off of May's budget. Savings is put away. We're gonna live off of May's budget during the month of June. And we're putting all of June's paychecks away so that when July comes up, we're using all of June's paychecks to pay for July. So you know what, if my husband loses his job, second week in July, June's money is paid for. It, all the bills are gonna be paid for. I don't have to figure out, rush, and do anything. It's, it's already done, it's already there. We have a little bit of a cushion time to deal with it. And so that's what I, that was the advice that I gave this person. Hey, it doesn't, if you follow that system, it doesn't matter if there's inconsistent or even inconsistent amounts in the sense that at the end of the uh, end of the month beginning of the month when you sit down and you're like okay these are the bills and that's something that you need to have on hand pretty much just at the at, in your back pocket or in a in a budget notebook okay so I pretty much have one that works a basic budget the basic budget has the mortgage, electricity, gas, insurance for the house and car, internet, phones, property tax, water, trash, sewer, any tithing we have, piano lessons, gasoline, groceries, birthday, Christmas, travel. All of that is already laid out what we would need per year broken down per month. So depending on what I made, then I can prioritize well based on the fact that um, it was a very inconsistent amount this month. I have about $200 less than I do every single month. I already know by my basic budget that I need to meet a certain amount every month. And if it's gonna be $200 below, not only do I need to kind of mentally prepare that for this month, but I can say, okay, well, there's, there's just that much less for groceries, but you know what, that's okay. I've been stocking up and we're just gonna eat our freezer and pantry this month. There's all these different things that go into play and factor in with that plan. And that's pretty much why I really, um, I really like that system. I really like that setup. It works if you are a cash only or debit card only thing person because you're still putting everything on paper. You're still having a cushion in your bank account in order to meet all of those things. So that was the information that I gave the friend who asked me and that's pretty much what at any time anybody's going to ask me, how do I budget for? I'm going to do it in that way. If you don't have a savings and, and is not able to do that, there's a couple things you can do. And I talked about in that video. This one I learned from, from somebody. Um, I think it was Angela Brannett. I think that's where I first heard about it. Some mortgage companies, if you call them and say, hey, I want to tack on May or whatever, September 2022's mortgage payment to the very end of the 30 year loan payment I got. So it, it's 
just extended one more month and I'm sure there's like a certain number of times you can do this she's the one that mentioned it so you're not basically saying I can't pay it you're just moving your payment over one year and you're going to take that mortgage and you're going to try to budget for that <coughs> find whatever you can to sell and create money for that even if it means that you've got things that you're just going to be without for a while. I have some extra homeschool curriculum. I could do a very basic, simple, minimal homeschool year and just sell the access and just be okay with that. Does that mean I'd have to replenish it later on? Possibly. But I would have been in a financial place where I can make this work better for my family. This is how I would do it. There's a number of things that you can do. You can take on babysitting. You can um, do some yard work. It's about that time of year where the leaves are falling. People are looking for yard work. And just be honest with people. And I know that there's a limit to what some people will do. I understand that. This is just going to be what works for you and your family. I'm giving you suggestions. Take your creative side. We all have a creative side. It doesn't necessarily have to be sewing, knitting, crocheting, that for the creative, but you can create something and make it money somehow, some way. You can go out and work somehow, some way. There, I, I am one that believes that there is something out there that everybody can do. It just depends on if you want to do it and um, the dynamic, your family dynamics that will allow you to do it. But there's also other streams that make it possible. And sometimes it means going out of your comfort zone. It just does. So that's how I would do that. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.